All right, our last thing is to take a look at the media queries. Um, let's consider that this site, where is it? Let me get to it. Let's consider that this site was being viewed on a phone. So we've got some great uh, responsive layout here. But the truth is, this might be about the width of an iPad, maybe, or a tablet. But once you get down to phone sizes, this is very awkward. It's not easy. There's some big gaps here. This is too tiny. That could be hard to read. Who knows? So what we need to do is play with some media queries. Let's just look at the inspector so I can show you one quick thing about it. Um, I'll pull this out. So in the new inspector, you have this button here. And what this does is it shows you some different widths up here. So right now it's showing us 660. So we could have actually done that little test in the inspector instead of right on the live website. So the way we start media queries is to go to our CSS and at the foot of it, we're going to, I'll just put this in a comment and you don't have to add this comment, but obviously I'm adding it for your purposes. And I think that most designers do add media queries. All right, so the standard format for a media query is at media screen and. And then in parentheses, you type your parameters here. So I'll type max width. It's common in this lesson, right? And I'm going to say 700. Although I noticed on my inspector that, uh, what was it that they put, 690? So 700 is standard. 690 might even be more standard. But uh, let's talk about that number in a second. So now you then get your curly brackets into which we will put some brand new CSS rules. So I'll put a little space here. So this number 700, you may be working on a website for a company and your boss might be dictating what that special width should be. If it is a WordPress site, then there's something that's pretty standard set and that might be 690, I don't know. But 700 is a great starting point and then you can always alter things from there. So what do we need to do? We need to... Uh, what do we need to do? Let me just close this so we can take a quick look at it all. We need to make a single column out of these two columns instead of floating them. We need a single column layout instead of having floating columns. And we need to make the images, all of the images, 100% of whatever width our single column is. These also need to not float. So rather than the, let's see, what are the images? Um, so the images are called figure in the uh, HTML. And they are all given a width of 200 px. So that's something we'll have to consider. So right now, the floating columns are the sidebar. Let's see, where is it? Right there. We have a sidebar that's floating. And it floats beside the content, so that's an important thing to know. So let's go down to our media query and type. Sidebar, oh, this is a pound, right? Because it's a div. And content. And now I'm putting another set of curly brackets. So you understand here, whoops, you understand here, we have an outer set of curly brackets, and then it's the parent of these inner rules. And I'm just gonna say float none. How about that? It's that easy. Let me do a save and scooch over to this. So as you can see, when I take this down, once we hit the 700 mark, 
and boop, none. So there's a few problems with this, and I would say they are things like, I would like for this to use up the whole space instead of be scrunched into what it used to be. And I would like these images and this text to take up the whole space. So I'm going to add one more rule down here. Pardon me. W-I-D-T-H. Width. 100%. Because that's what we want. We want these to take up 100% of the width of the 700px that we've named it a standard to be. So I'll save this, go back to that, and refresh. So now, whoops, let's look at that up there. Now these are stretching out a little bit. They can't stretch out much. I mean, some of these are short, but if they were longer, they would show up.